Hello everybody, Robin Nichols back with some information about making a jigsaw panorama. Now first off, what's a jigsaw panorama? Well a panorama is a collection of pictures that have been stitched together and we use that technique in photography a lot because we all travel these days to places that are really big and if we for example want to encompass the whole view of a valley for example it's quite hard we probably have to use a wide angle lens and when you do that of course with a wide angle lens a lot of stuff gets distorted because of the optical distortion the optical nature of a wide angle lens but probably more importantly what happens is uh, we end up by getting an awful lot of sky and an awful lot of ground in the foreground which is not really interesting stuff that we shoot as panoramas tends to be sitting there through the middle of the picture tends to be at a bit of a distance so what I'm going to do is this I'm going to sh I'm going to show you how we do it uh, and one of the cool things about a panorama of course is you can shoot vertically or horizontally and in these cases I've shot uh, vertically and this haven't uh, been bothered to turn them around I've lowered the resolution of my camera okay so you have the choice of large medium or small these are technically medium or small pictures because I've shot about 30 frames and the point of doing that is you shoot bang, 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 bang along the top and then you drop the camera a few degrees and then you go bang, 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 shoot through the middle and then do another layer at the bottom. So you split it up into two or three or four or five layers. The reason, of course, for lowering the resolution is to give your computer back home a bit of a chance of actually stitching it together because if you shoot like 50, 60 megabyte files, there's no, no way on earth this is going to stitch or certainly not uh, in less than an hour or two. So I've lowered the resolution. And as you can see here, I have, well, don't, maybe you can't see here, I have a whole bunch of, this is actually the city of Fez in North Africa. And we went up to a viewpoint. It's fantastic. So I shot loads and loads. And here I'm going panning to the right, coming back again, and then panning to the right, lower down. So I've got loads and loads of pictures. Each one is 14 megabytes. Okay, so it's, you know, reasonable resolution. You can see here under the window menu, these are all the pictures I've got open. So one of the tricks, of course, when you're shooting panorama is, uh, in, certainly in the jigsaw panorama, is to make sure that you lower the resolution. Number two is you don't necessarily have to go in the same direction all the time because the software will find matching bits to line it all up with. Number three, it's very important probably to shoot in manual metering mode so that the light doesn't change from picture one to picture 30 or whatever you're using. Number four, it's very important to possibly put it into white balance custom and so the color doesn't change. The fifth tip I can give you is to set the focus to autofocus because if something in you know, it's a bit of grass or a tree or something in the foreground and the camera focuses from the distance to something in the foreground it will change the shape of the frame and give you stitching problems. Um, and that's about it. So you can use a tripod or in this case I just shot freehand and the nice thing about these panoramas let me just actually get this underway and then I'll ch carry on chatting so in version 11 of Photoshop elements of course photo merge is being shifted from the file new menu to the enhance photo merge menu and I'm just going to choose panorama I'm going to choose auto I'm going to say add all those open files and it's going to go are you serious and I'm going to say yes and I'll click OK so unbelievably good software because it will actually find pictures that are horizontal find pictures that are vertical and rotate them it'll think about it for a good while and hopefully it's going to put them all together now I actually have tried this a couple of times and I do know it works another advantage is and for me this is a creative thing is you never quite know what shape it's going to come out because of course as you're kind of shooting along the top and then down the sides you, you know there's no way you can get them totally rectilinear so that when it stitches them they're going to be a little bit like a, I suppose a jigsaw that's been picked a completed jigsaw that's been picked up and then dropped and some of the bits have come off the edges one of the one of the things I do urge you to though is just make sure that when you're doing it don't miss anything out from the middle of the uh, composition because that's the worst thing if you get this beautiful uh, composite of say 30 pictures and there's a big sort of square hole in the middle because you forgot to shoot that so that is one thing um, that's a little bit of a pain what I tend to do when I've shot the jigsaw panorama and I'll shoot my foot to begin with or just an out of focus camera bag shoot all the frames and then shoot the camera bag again just so I know that those are the components for my jigsaw and when I've done that you can actually just go and shoot a couple of wide angle shots of the whole scene just in case there's a bit in the middle there somewhere that you need to use to fill in the gap you can see things are working at an amazing speed in the background. I do have a lot of RAM in my computer, so it seems to be handling this quite nicely. And I think I've got a probably 20 or 22 frames here. 
now it's this is the this is the job that requires the computing grunt and this is where you will find out uh, in the process or in the course of making one of these panoramas whether all the money you spent on your laptop or your desktop computer was really worth it because um, this is where it really struggles to do all the matching and all the processing what we'll also possibly ask you is would it want to um, as as we've got this uh, weird here we go this weird background so there's the composition knocked together hopefully yep so everything is there it's fantastic even the out of focus olive trees in the foreground so I love this because it's an unpredictable process would you like to automatically fill in the edges of your panorama I'm gonna say yes because I know it's not going to do it um, because it's going to come and say I haven't got enough rem memory if you really want to get this happening and you see this is still 800 megabytes even though they're low resolution you would have to go through and reduce the resolution of your files your original files probably by 70 percent and then it'll more than likely do it but it won't make a very good job of filling in around the olive trees at the bottom here all this checkerboard means there's nothing there and so it's just going to bodge it and throw in all sorts of stuff in there so it's a bit gimmicky I would prefer to simply leave it as is it as it is and so what I'm going to do now is choose layer flatten image so I'm going to lose all the layers and now I've got this nice white background I think looking at this I think I need to rotate let's just rotate the thing something like that so maybe maybe something like that's going to be better I'm going to go layer here we go um, and we're going to probably flatten that flatten that layer again there we go just to put white in there so that's pretty cool so I'll take the grid off and we can zoom in and have a look and you'll see the most amazing amount of detail as it's stitched you know all these 13 megapixel images or 14 megapixel images together it all lines up almost perfectly I've had a look at this a few times and I can't see you know it is such a busy picture you'd never quite know whether it lines up or not but it looks pretty good even the telephone cables stretching across the lower part of the valley seem to fit in quite nicely unbelievable so once we've done that of course we can then zoom out and we can apply an adjustment layer such as levels should we wish to you know darken it down increase the color add some impact to the picture like that and that's what a jigsaw panorama looks like fantastic this actually worked extremely well in a digital photo book that I made I had a double page a3 which means it's about 44 inches wide looks fantastic